You're not going to want to miss what Chris Sims had to say after being called out for his terrible take on Jalen Hurts. A.J. Brown claps back at the idea he didn't give a lot of effort in the pick six of Marshawn Lattimore, and Philadelphia's Sunday matchup against the Giants is at a very good time. I'm Thomas Mott. This is The Thomas Mott Show. What's up, guys? Thomas Mott here. Welcome to the Thomas Mott Show on what is a crazy Tuesday in the National Football League. All of you know what I'm talking about. We're going to get to that Bills Cincinnati story coming up at the end of the show today in our NFL National Story, but we will start with some uh, Eagle related stuff and then go into the NFL. Starting with this whole Chris Sims tantrum uh, about ESPN reposting his Jalen Hurts disc. Not a lot of uh, websites are actually covering this. I had to find it on Twitter, and then Crossing Broad had a pretty good write up on what's going on here. If you don't know what I'm talking about, let me just kind of set the stage for you. So Chris Sims is an analyst for NBC Sports, obviously former quarterback, and he's not that terrible. A lot of people rip him as like a horrible analyst. He has some pretty good takes, you know, most notably Lamar Jackson he called would be a very good quarterback before anyone else did. But he also, much like most of the national media, has some really bad takes. And the one that he had about Jalen Hurts a couple of weeks ago not being the MVP was so ridiculous that now that it's shown and basically proven itself that the Eagles need Jalen Hurts and it's not just a system, he looks like an idiot, but he won't admit to it. And the whole exchange on his uh, podcast or show or whatever it is is really funny. So let's first start with what he actually actually said a couple of weeks ago. This is December 15th, 2022, about Jalen Hurts not being his MVP. Listen to this. I mean, that's why Hurts will not be my MVP vote, for sure. Was, was that, I mean, he explained it right. I mean, it's an incredible system that that coach has never even ran before, but they had to run it because they couldn't run their system with Jalen Hurts. It's the best offensive line in football. It's the best defensive line in football. I mean, it's it's just not for the 49ers. They're the best defense in football. It's the best rushing attack in football. It's the arguably the best duo at receiver, not named Waddle and Tyreek Hill in football. And it, it's not that far off from them. It's a really good tight end in Dallas Goddard when he's out there. So this is one of those where I feel like it's setting up where it's just like the quarterback of the best teams that will win the MVP. And I want to go... There's just no way he's more valuable to his team than Mahomes, Burrow, or Allen. First off, let me just comment on that last little point there, that the MVP is just turning into the best quarterback of uh, the best team that's going to win the MVP. And he makes the argument because he doesn't think Jalen Hurts is the best quarterback in the National Football League. But look who's next on the list, Mahomes, Burrow, Allen. Those are the other three best quarterbacks on the other three best teams. Just totally nullifying his argument there. So that's what he said. This was pre-Hurts being injured. And so he made the argument that, well, Philadelphia's only winning a lot of games because Jalen Hurts is in the good system, not because of Jalen Hurts. And then Hurts goes out and Philadelphia loses their next two football games. And a lot of people are resharing that whole, you know, Twitter tweet or that whole exchange from from Chris Sims. And he obviously is not very happy about it. Listen to him right here. Um from the Crossing Broad Twitter account when he was basically asked about this on his show. Surprising. And, you know, again, Jalen Hurts makes them better. I know that. And, like, f- you, Sports Center Instagram, for, like, putting it out again for, like, the third time in three weeks. Like, f- off. Like, really, f- off ESPN Sports Center. Like, seriously. They didn't put it out that, that, that in my quote, last week after the, the Cowboys game, but they're going to wait to the game yesterday. That's why I hate social media and f- you ESPN Sports Center one more time on the way out. You wait till it's relevant. You can slam someone. You just, you just. I just don't. I just let's wait fucking, for the right opportunity. Don't, do they have? Do they not make content in there anymore? I mean, damn, stop jocking me, ESPN. Holy in the shit. whole, in the whole context, I, I feel like people Give think you went see your check. Like this was in the MVP debate right. context. Like who is most Invite valuable? Invite me to on the team. Sports Center and let's have a conversation if you want to really get into this Sports wow. Center. Wow. Invite me on. ESPN, you scared little bitch. That is, uh, <laughs> you think he's a little bit sensitive to that whole topic? I mean, come on. What he should have done, and obviously he's upset here because ESPN reshared it, so he gets even more hate. But if you're a national commentator for any, you know, with your news guy, your sports guy, uh, cooking guy, whatever it is, you're going to have critiques and hate. And if you can't take the uh, critiques, like, what are you doing? I mean, come on. People comment on my show, and I'm, I'm, I'm a nobody, and I get a bunch of critiques. You can't take them to heart. But this was clearly an instance where he was wrong, where Jalen Hurts was the reason Philadelphia was playing so well. Sure, they have great talent around him. No one's arguing that. But the idea that he cannot, <laughs> excuse me, be the NFL. MVP because of the talent around him is absolutely ridiculous, and it's funny to see Chris Sims uh, have to eat his words just a little bit in this whole situation. Now, I don't know if Jalen Hurts is going to win the NFL MVP. I think that missing two games, whether it showcased the fact that he should actually win it or not, is definitely a knock on him, whether it's fair or not. I think it's unfair. I think he should be the MVP, but 
Will he actually win it? I'm not sure. I think if he comes back on Sunday, as he's expected to happen, talked about that on the show yesterday, and he balls out and they win the football game, they lock up the one seed, I'd have a very hard time not giving him the NFL MVP. But I also am wearing this, and I have this, and I have this color, and I have that green sign over there, and so maybe I'm a little bit biased. I'm not sure. Let me know what you guys think about the whole situation. Okay, I want to jump into something that is really cool that we're doing here on the Thomas Mott Show that is absolutely brand new. I'm sharing my iPhone screen with you guys right now because I think this is a really cool opportunity for a lot of the fantasy football fans out there who are no longer alive in fantasy football because the season is virtually over. I partnered with this app called Vigit, V-I-G space I-T, and it's a fantasy sports betting app. And so it's like sports betting where you can place bets on different football games and different baseball games and you know soccer games and stuff like that, but it is actually not real betting. You're not using any sort of money. Totally free to go ahead and sign up. And I've created a league for the Thomas Mott Show. And we're going to have weekly prizes. And in the end, the winner is going to get an NFL jersey of their choice, an Eagle jersey of their choice. So here's how it works, right? Once you go ahead and click the link down below in my description box, you will be uh, automatically entered into the Thomas Mott Show. And you'll see that um, the whole entire league at the leaderboard under leagues. And then it's a weekly leaderboard where you can go ahead and bet on games. And it'll showcase who's the best better on all the different sports that are happening. You see three of us are already in here, and all you do is you go through their bets page, and you place a bunch of bets on a bunch of different stuff. So there's an all tab, there's an NFL tab, obviously the next NFL game is going to be, you know, Titans and Jaguars and Chiefs and Raiders, and you can bet on three different options, the spread, the total, uh, and then the money lines, basically the spread, the over-under, and the money line. And now it's going to work in my league. The way that I've set it up is everyone gets 2,500 um, virtual coins to bet on every single day. And so between now and the end of the Super Bowl, we're going to go ahead and keep the leaderboard live, and everyone who joins has a chance to win the league and win an NFL jersey of, again, their choice. So totally free. Again, this is totally legal for everyone of age in any state because you're not actually betting your own money. So it's not like FanDuel or DraftKings, which obviously we talked about on the show if you're in a legal betting state. This is all virtual. It's like fantasy football, and there's no... Um, obviously knock on you if you don't win your bets. You're not actually betting your own money. So it's a really cool thing that we're starting here on the Thomas Mott Show. Go ahead and sign up, join the leaderboard, and get to betting and see if you can beat me as I'm doing this every single day to see if maybe I can actually win it. Now, I won't get the jersey, but you guys, the number one total aggregate winner will go ahead and get the jersey, a really cool app where you can bet on a bunch of stuff. For instance, you got NBA games happening tonight and college basketball games happening tonight. And again, it's worth noting when you look at these NBA games, look at everything, you get up to 2,500, you see it right there, in your daily coins. And again, those are virtual. So I've made a couple of bets today. I only have, you know, 1,600 uh, or 1,600 coins left, essentially. You get 500 max per game. So it's really cool. Download the app. Go ahead and use my link. That's how you get into my actual league. You'll see it pop up on your leagues here. Obviously, right there, the Thomas Mott Show. You got the leaderboard. It gives you the rules. And again, it's all free to play. And so you can actually get into you know, having some fun with sports betting without actually doing sports betting, and you have a chance to win an Eagles jersey after the Super Bowl is how long we're going to go ahead and run it. So jump in on the app. It'll be down below in the description box. Really cool opportunity here on the Thomas Mott Show. Okay, let's move over here to A.J. Brown. I think this is interesting, too. Crossing Broad, again, covered this one because it was only really on Twitter in terms of what's going on with A.J. Brown. So the whole pick six situation, um, it, it drove a lot of people the wrong way because people watched the pick six of Gardner Minshew throwing towards A.J. Brown. Marshawn Lattimore picks it, and people were calling out A.J. Brown for his effort. They were saying, oh, my gosh, you know, he didn't make a big enough effort to try and break up the play, to try and stop Lattimore after he intercepted it. And A.J. Brown has taken to Twitter, deleted tweets, taken to his Instagram, and really called out some of the national media people people who are calling him, uh, you know, out for his lack of effort on the play. So here's what A.J. Brown said about the whole situation. I have a new route. When I get a certain look like I did, which makes my route becomes dead, and he works the other side. My route becomes a log route, which stands for love of the game, which also means I'm not getting the ball. And Acho had a whole breakdown of what's going on here and how, you know, this mistake happened. It's on Gardner Minshew, the fact that Gardner Minshew should have looked at A.J. Brown and actually understood that the route had changed and not throw the ball that way. And so a lot of people are saying, that, you know, A.J. Brown, again, lacked effort in this whole situation, which is ridiculous. But Brown actually had a tweet that he since deleted, which is interesting. Quote, I play the game with everything in me, so that's all... So, so that's all a loaf of she is BS. I'm not even tripping on mistakes because we all make them, but questioning my effort when I give my entire life to the game is a no for me, 
end quote. And actually, you saw this yesterday. Nick Sirianni went ahead and fell on the sword. Uh, you see the Dan uh, Zangaro from NBC Sports tweeting, Nick Sirianni falls on the sword for the pick six. Sirianni says he'll never question his player's effort. A.J. Brown earlier today defended his effort in a series of tweets. So, interesting overall situation going on with A.J. Brown. It's not anything bad. It's just funny to see how people are calling out his lack of effort in a game where he had a touchdown, had 97 yards receiving, and just because Gardner Minshew had a bad read, making people believe it's A.J. Brown's fault is ridiculous. So, I'm behind A.J. Brown 100%. Again, Nick Sirianni is as well. This, I think, will just fuel A.J. Brown even more. I expect a big game from him on Sunday against the Giants. Uh, let's move over here quickly to the NFL Week 18 scoreboard via ESPN. This gives you a look at what time games are happening. This was not announced until yesterday, and it showcases when Philadelphia will play. And it does have an interesting look at how the NFL schedule makers wanted to make Week 18 as interesting as possible. And so, obviously, a couple of matchups here. Titans and Jaguars. This is for the AFC um, South Division. The winner is going to go ahead and win it. And then you see a lot of games in the 1 o'clock slate that have a little bit of meaning in terms of winning the division. This one, obviously a big one. That one one no longer. This one, the Patriots trying to go ahead and win and in for that scenario. Vikings trying to lock up the two seed over the 49ers and so on and so forth. But then you notice the Philadelphia game takes place at 425 p.m. Eastern time on CBS, the exact same time as the Cowboy game. I think the schedule makers did a good job here. Not that it was hard to do, but they wanted to make sure that it's not a scenario where the Eagle Giant game became irrelevant if the Cowboy Commander game happened earlier or vice versa. Now, both games will be happening at the same time. And so while we, the fans, will be watching very closely the Cowboy Commander game, there's not a scenario where Philadelphia could pull up and, you know, not try us hard versus the Giants and vice versa. So that means, again, Philadelphia with a win wins the NFC East in the one seed. They can get the NFC East in a one seed with a Cowboy loss and a little bit of help as well. And so we'll definitely keep an eye on both of these situations going into Sunday's Week 18 matchups. Obviously, Lions and Packers, big clinching scenario for both teams here. Seattle loses to the Rams. The Lions can win and they're in as the seven seed. So good job by the NFL schedule maker. They did a really, um, I think, interesting uh, Week 18 slate, and they got it pretty much right to where it's going to be fascinating for everyone involved, especially teams like us that are going for playoff clinching scenarios. All right, if you want to go and bet on that Eagle game, again, I mentioned if you're in a legal betting state, jump in with our friends at FanDuel for their No Sweat First Bet $1,000 back in free bets. Talked about this on the show a couple of times the past couple of weeks. The link will also be down below in the description box. All you got to do is be a first-time uh, creator of a uh, FanDuel account, sign up, deposit $10 or more, place that first bet, get back $1,000 in free bets if you don't win. All the info and all of the uh, obviously legal states are on the website as well, so check out the link. Okay, let's go ahead and wrap up with the biggest story of the National Football League, maybe the entire season. Again, I filmed this early on a Tuesday morning, and so I don't have any sort of update. And if you're, you're watching this, there might be an update here. All I can say is this is a horrible situation, and the thoughts and prayers are going to DeMar Hamlin and his entire family who were really at the football game. This is a guy who was not supposed to be a starting safety in the National Football League. Micah Hyde goes out, and really, he's since week, what, one or two, he's been a really solid starting safety in the National Football League. Really scary situation. ESPN did a great job job covering last night, suffering from cardiac arrest, and this is going to be an ongoing story that we're all going to be keeping at the front of our mind and, of course, in our thoughts and our prayers. I will say this, though. Skip Bayless got a lot of hate for a tweet talking about what happens to the actual football game, and timing had to, a lot to do with the hate that comes from that tweet, but you do have to ask the question from a strictly football perspective, even though it does not matter at all. I emphasize that in terms of uh, DeMar Hamlin being in critical condition as of filming this uh, show, but the Bills and Bengals game being postponed, it's not like they're going to play it today. It's not like, not like they're going to play it tomorrow. I mean, that's kind of the second thought, in, or not the second thought, but a deep further thought in a lot of people's minds. When is this game going to be played? Because it is significant for the actual playoff seating. Again, does that actually matter? No, in the grand scheme of things. What matters is the health and safety of the Buffalo safety. But I am very curious to see what the NFL is going to do about this because they are between a rock and a hard place in terms of needing to play this football game, but also totally understanding the situation that they're dealing with right now being a very virtually impossible situation. So I'll keep an eye on all of that. But again, what actually matters is DeMar Hamlin and not, you know, a one seed or a two seed. That's just ridiculous. But it is a thought that a lot of us have had, and I'm very curious to see how the NFL handles it. A really good opportunity for the NFL um, to showcase their care for the players, I think. And I think postponing the game, you know, not playing it late last night was a really good option. Took them a while to figure it out, but they're in a tough situation. It hasn't really happened in the National Football League since, what, 1971 when a player died actually during a game. So we'll keep an eye on this. But again, the main focus is Damar Hamlin as of filming in critical condition after suffering that cardiac arrest and what was one of the scariest things you'll see in any sports game. Thoughts and prayers to him and his family. 
Okay, plenty more coming up in the National Football League and also the Philadelphia Eagles. I'm expecting a Hertz update tomorrow. Uh, the Eagles did not put any of their coordinators in front of the podium today out of respect to DeMar Hamlin, so they'll be back most likely on Thursday. You're going to walk through tomorrow. I think tomorrow we're going to have a lot more updates in terms of the health of CJ Gardner-Johnson and Jalen Hurts. Be sure to stay tuned for that. Um, I'm Thomas Mott. Hope you guys enjoy the rest of your, of your day. See you.